Hey beautiful people of the Most High God, all praises to the Most High. I hope when this message reaches you, it finds you in good health and strength, and it leads you to repentance. So the message and the teaching I got from God is on repentance, and it is a call to repentance to the inhabitants of the heavens and earth. A call to repentance. So Luke 5 and chapter 5 verse 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So repent of your sins. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God winked. The times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 10, verse 67. Behold, this is my doctrine. Whosoever repenteth, and comes on to me the same as my church. Whosoever declares more or less than this, the same is not of me, but is against me. Therefore he is not of my church. And now, behold, whosoever is of my church and endures, my ch endures of my church to the end, him will I establish upon my rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. And now, remember the words of him who is the life and light of the world, your Redeemer, your Lord, your God. Amen. Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 18, verse 6. Behold, the world is ripen, ripening in iniquity, and it must needs be that the children of men are stirred up unto repentance, both the Gentiles and also the house of Israel. Alma, chapter 32, verse 13. And now, because you are compelled to be humble, blessed are ye. For a man sometimes, if he is compelled to be humble, seeks repentance. And now surely whosoever repents shall find mercy. And he that finds mercy and endures to the end the same shall be saved. For we know that God is a merciful God. If you confess your sins and forsake them, he will, he will forgive you. The first book of Nephi, chapter 10, verse 18. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the way is prepared for all men from the foundations of the world, if it so be that they repent and come unto him. Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 58, verse, verse 47. Let them preach by the way, and bear testimony of the truth in all place, in all places, and call upon the rich, the high and the low, and the poor to repent. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 1 verse 32 to verse 33. Nevertheless, he that repents and does the commandments of the Lord shall be forgiven, and he that repents not from him shall be taken even the light which he has received. For my spirit shall not always strive with man, says the Lord of hosts. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 3 verse 10. But remember, God is merciful. Therefore, repent of all that which thou hast done, which is contrary to the commandment which I gave you. And thou art still chosen and are again called to do the work. So when you repent to God, he will forgive you. And you're still chosen and you're called to still do his work. He will restore you as being chosen again. Many called, few are chosen. You will be chosen again when you repent to God. You will be forgiven your sins because he's a merciful God. And that's what he requires of you because that's why Christ died for your sins. He didn't call the righteous to repentance, but sinners, those who broke his commandments. The first book of Nephi, chapter 22, verse 28. But behold, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people shall dwell safely in the Holy One of Israel, if it so be that they will repent. So you'll dwell safely with God. All nations, all kindreds, tongues, and people, if they repent to God for the laws that and his commandments that they've broken. Now, Alma, chapter 34, verse 33. And now, as I said unto you before, as you have had so many witnesses, therefore I beseech of you that you do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. So don't procrastinate in repentance. 
If you know you sinned against God, repent. Don't wait any longer to repent for your sins because you don't know what another, what another day can befall and you don't know what another day can bring forth. So therefore, I beseech of you that you do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. Don't wait till the end. For after this day of life, which is given us to prepare for eternity, every day you're given is to prepare you for the etern for your eternity. Behold, if we do not improve our time while in this life, so this every day you're supposed to improve your time and improve yourself as a person in this life. Then comes the night of darkness wherein there can be no labor performed. So you don't procrastinate because you don't know when the day is going to come upon you and your labor cannot be performed. You have the time to repent now. But when God takes away his mercy for you from you, then you have no time to labor in your repentance. Alma chapter 34, verse 34. You cannot say when you are brought to that awful crisis that I will repent. So when troubles will follow you, you can't say, oh, I'm going to repent, God, I'm going to repent, God, don't procrastinate. Every day you, while you live, you're supposed to improve yourself to be a better person. You cannot say when you are brought to that awful crisis that I will repent, then I will return to my God. Nay, you cannot say this. For that same spirit which does possess your bodies at that at the time that you go out of this life, the same spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. So if God is not the spirit that's in you, you don't know when you're going to die. You don't know what another day may bring forth. So whatever spirit that's in you, that's the one that's going to possess you. Helma, oh, forgive me, I just went too far. Helaman chapter 5, verse 11. And he has power given unto him from the Father, Christ, to redeem them from their sins because of repentance. That is the only way you'll be redeemed from your sins. Through repentance. Therefore, he has sent his angels to declare the titans of of the conditions of repentance, which brings on to the power of the Redeemer, on to the salvation of their souls. Moroni chapter 8 verse 24. Behold, my son, this thing ought not to be, for repentance is on to them that are under condemnation and under the curse of a broken law. So you're under condemnation from God and a curse when you break his laws. That is why you must repent. Repentance should be daily and you have to change your ways and you have to become a better person. Alma chapter 26 verse 22. Yeah, he that repents and exercises faith and brings forth good works. So you got to be good. You got to bring forth good works, not evil works in your repentance. You have to change the old man to the new man. And yeah, he that repents and exercises faith and brings forth good works and prays continually without ceasing unto such is given to know the mysteries of God. Yeah, unto such it shall be given to reveal things which never have been revealed. Yeah, and it shall be given unto such to bring forth thousands of souls to repentance, even as it has been given unto us to bring these, our brethren, to repentance. So when you repent, you can teach others where you went wrong in your life to bring save thousands of souls to repentance back to God. Alma chapter 32 verse 13. And now, because you are compelled to be humble, blessed are ye. For a man sometimes, if he is compelled to be humble, seeks repentance. And now, surely, whosoever repents shall find mercy. If you repent, you will find mercy with God, for you know God is a merciful God. And he that finds mercy and endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 42, verse 13. And they, um, I'm going to read a lot of precepts that God wants me to read out of Doctrine and Covenants chapter 42. 
So I'm just going to continuously read and break it down as I go. And they shall observe the covenants and church articles to do them. That's a part of your repentance, to observe the covenants of God and the church articles to do them. And these shall be their teachings as they be directed by the Spirit, the Spirit of God. And the Spirit shall be given unto you by the prayer of faith. And if you receive not the Spirit, you shall not teach. So people who don't have the Spirit of God, they're not permitted to teach the Word of God. And all this you shall observe to do as I have commanded concerning your teaching until the fullness of my scriptures is given. You're not supposed to teach until God commands you to teach and you have the fullness of the understanding of God's scriptures. Not everybody is a teacher. The greatest teachers are still learning. And as you shall lift up your voices by the comforter, you shall speak and prophesy as seems me good. For behold, the Comforter knows all things and bears record of the Father and of the Son. Who is the Comforter? The Holy Spirit. And now, behold, I speak unto the church, thou shalt not kill. And he that kills shall not have forgiveness in this world nor the world to come. And again, I say, thou shalt not kill, but he that killeth shall die. Thou shalt not steal. He that steals will not, and will not repent shall be cast out. Thou shalt not lie. He that lies and will not repent shall be cast out. Thou shalt love thy wife with all thy heart and shall cleave on to her and none else. And he that looks upon a woman to lust after her shall deny the faith and shall not have the spirit. So if you look on a woman to lust, you'll, de you'll deny the faith of God and you won't have the spirit of God. And if he repents not, he shall be cast out. So if you look upon another woman to lust after her, that is a sin. And you don't repent, God's Spirit will leave you if you're lusting after another woman. And if you don't repent for it, you'll be cast out. Your eyes should only be for your wife. Thou shalt not commit adultery, and he that commits adultery and repents not shall be cast out. But he that has committed adultery and repents with all his heart and forsakes it and does no does it no more shall be thou shall forgive so if you committed adultery and you repent with all your heart and you forsake committing adultery cheating on your husband cheating on your wife and you do it no more you shall be forgiven but if he does it again he shall not be forgiven but be shall be cast out Thou shalt not speak, speak evil of thy neighbor, nor do, it, do him any harm. Thou knowest my loss concerning these things are given in my scriptures. He that sins and repents not shall be cast out. If thou lovest me, thou shalt serve me and keep all my commandments. And behold, thou wilt remember the poor and consecrate of thy property, properties for their support, that thou, which thou hast to impart unto them with a covenant and a deed, which cannot be broken. And again, thou shalt not be proud in thy heart. Let all thy garments be plain and their beauty, the beauty of the work of thy own hands. And let all things be done in cleanness, cleansing cleanness before me, thou shalt not be idle. For he that is idle shall not eat the bread, nor wear the garments of the laborer. Remember, we're called to labor in God's vineyard, and you're not supposed to be idle. You're not supposed to even hang with idlers because everybody has their duty from God. They're supposed to be laboring. And if they're idle, they shall not have garments of the laborer. And whosoever among you are sick and have not faith to be healed, but believe shall be nourished with all tenderness and with herbs and mild food, and that not by the hand of an enemy. Thou shalt live together in love. Remember the commandment Christ gave to love one another. Thou shalt live together in love insomuch that thou shalt weep for the loss of them that die and more especially for those who have not hope of a glorious resurrection. And it shall come to pass that those that die in me shall not taste of death. 
for it shall be sweet unto them. And they that die not in me, woe unto them, for their death is bitter. And again, it shall come to pass that he that has faith in me to be healed, and is not appointed unto this shall be healed. He who has faith to see shall see. He who has faith to hear shall hear. The lame who has faith to leap shall leap. And they who have not faith to do these things, but believe in me, have power to become my sons. And inasmuch as they break not my laws, thou shalt bear their infirmities. Thou shalt stand in the place of thy stewardship. Thou shalt not take thy brother's garments. Thou shalt pay for that which is which thou shalt receive of thy brother. And if thou obtains more than that which would be for thy support, thou shalt give it unto my storehouse, that all things may be done according to that which I ha have said. Thou shalt ask, and my scripture shall be given, as I have appointed, and they shall be preserved in safety. And it is expedient that thou shouldst hold thy peace concerning them, and not teach them until you have received them in full. You must hold your peace, knowing God's scriptures, until you have received the understanding from God concerning his scriptures, and you're not allowed to teach them until you receive them in full. Just because you baptize doesn't mean you're allowed to just go out and teach God's word. You have to get the understanding from God. God commands you what to teach. God commands you what to speak. And I give unto you a commandment that then you shall teach them unto all men. When God gives you commandment, and I will give unto you a commandment that then you shall teach them unto all men. For they shall be taught unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people. Thou shalt take the things which thou hast received, which have been given unto thee in my scriptures for a law, to be my law to govern my church. And he that does according to these things shall be saved, and he that does them not shall be damned, if he so continue. If thou shalt ask, thou shalt receive revelation upon revelation, knowledge upon knowledge, that thou may know the mysteries and peaceable things, that which bring joy, that which brings life on life eternal. Thou shalt ask, and it shall be revealed unto you in my own due time, where the new Jerusalem shall be built. Behold, verily I say unto you, that whatsoever persons among you having put away their companions for the cause of fornication, are in other words, if they shall testify before you in all loneliness, of heart that this is the case, you shall not cast them out from among you. But if you find that any persons have left their companions for the sake of adultery, and they, they themselves are the offenders, and their companions are living, they shall be cast out from among you. And again I say unto you that you shall be watchful and careful with all inquiry, that you receive none such among you if they are married. So, you don't receive people who are adulterers, who you know cheat on their spouse. And if they are not married, if they committed fornication and they're not married, they shall repent of all their sins, or you shall not receive them. So, if they don't repent for their fornications, whether they're married or not, you shall not receive them. Not as friends and not in the church. They're cast out because they didn't repent and they didn't forsake their adulteries and their fornications. And again, every person who belongs to this church of Christ shall observe to keep all the commandments and covenants of the church. And it shall come to pass that if any person among you shall kill, they shall be delivered up to the delivered up and dealt with according to the laws of the land. For remember that he has no forgiveness, and it shall be proved according to the laws of the land. And if any man or woman shall commit adultery, he or she shall be tried before two elders of the church, or more, and every word shall be established against them or against him or her by two witnesses of the church, and if not of the enemy, and not of the enemy. So not these people's enemies. If somebody committed adultery, 
they're supposed to be tried before the elders of the church, not from no witness of their enemies. But if there are more than two witnesses, it is better. But he or she shall be condemned by the mouth of two witnesses, and the elders shall lay the case before the church, and the church shall lift up their hands against him or her, that they may be dealt with according to the law of God. That is if they don't repent and forsake their adulteries that they committed on their husband or wife. And if it can be, it is necessary that the bishop be present also. And thus you shall do in all cases which shall come before you. And if a man or woman shall rob, he or she shall be delivered up to, unto the law of the land. And if he or she shall steal, he or she shall be delivered up unto the law of the land. And if he or she shall lie, he or she shall be delivered up unto the law of the land. And if he or she shall do any manner of iniquity, he or she shall be delivered up unto the law, even that of God. And if thy brother or sister offend thee, thou shalt take him or her between him and her and thee alone. And if he or she confess, thou shalt be reconciled. And if he or she confess not, thou shalt deliver him or her up unto the church, not to the members, but to the elders. And it shall be done in a meeting, and that not before the world. And if thy brother or sister offend many, he or she shall be chastened before many. And if any one offend openly, if your brother or sister of, or any offend openly, he or she shall be rebuked openly. So if there were people offending people openly, he or she shall be rebuked openly, that he or she may be ashamed. And if he or she confesses not, he or she shall be delivered up unto the law of God. So if they don't confess their sins that they were offending people openly, they will be delivered up to the law of God. God will deal with them. If any shall offend in secret, if they were offending people in secret, he or she shall be rebuked in secret that he or she may have opportunity to confess in secret to him or her whom he or she has offended and to God that the church may not speak reproachfully of him or her. And thus shall you conduct in all things. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 42 verse 28. Thou knowest my loss concerning these things are given in my scriptures. He that sins and repents not shall be cast out. So the liar, if they don't repent, cast out. The thief, if they steal and don't repent, cast out. The adulterer, adulterer if they they don't confess their sins and repent, they're cast out. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 49 and 8. Wherefore, I will that all men shall repent, for all are under sin except those which I have reserved unto myself, holy men that you know not of. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 53 verse 4. And if your brethren desire to escape their enemies, let them repent of all their sins and become truly humble before me and contrary. So if your brethren desire to escape their sins, if you desire to escape your enemies, forgive me, if you desire to escape your enemies, repent of all your sins, says God, and truly be humble before him and contrary. Humble yourself before God, repent of all your sins, and you will escape all of your enemies. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 56 verse 8. And again, verily I say unto you that my servant Ezra thus thire must repent of his pride and of his selfishness. So if you've been prideful that and you've been selfish, you must repent of being prideful and selfish. God told you to be kind and God told you to be humble. And obey the former commandments which I have given him concerning the place on which he lives. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 58 verse 43. But this you may know, if a man repents of his sins, behold, he will confess them and forsake them. You, repentance comes with confession. 
If you're repenting of your sins, you must confess them to God and the person that you sinned against. And you must forsake it. That is true repentance. And when you confess your sins, God heals you and you can escape your enemies. And God restores you to what he created you to be. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 39 verse 18. Inasmuch as they do repent and receive the fullness of my gospel and become sanctified, I will stay my hand in judgment. So when you repent and you receive God's fullness of his gospel and you become sanctified, holy, set apart, he will stay his hand in judgment. He will remember mercy triumphs over judgment. He will have mercy on you and he will stay his hand in the judgment for you. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 6 verse 9. Say nothing but repentance unto this generation. Keep my commandments and assist to bring forth my work according to my commandments and you shall be blessed. Helaman chapter 5 verse 29. And it came to pass that there came a voice as if it were above the clouds of darkness saying, Repent ye. Repent ye, and seek no more to destroy my servants, whom I have sent unto you to declare good tidings. Because you got people who try to destroy God's servants who call them to repent. Because they're ashamed of their sins. But when they repent and confess their sins, there's no shame. Because God forgives them, and the person they sinned against has to forgive them as well. The second book of Nephi, chapter 28, verse 19. For the kingdom of the devil must shake, and they which belong to it must needs to be stirred up unto repentance. What? For the kingdom of the devil must shake, and they which belong to it must needs to be stirred up unto repentance. Even those who work for Satan must repent, or the devil will grasp them, with his everlasting chains, and they be stirred up to anger and perish. Helaman chapter 50 and verse 1. And now, my beloved brethren, behold, I declare unto you that except you shall repent, your houses shall be left unto you desolate. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 5 verse 19. For a desolating scourge shall go forth among the inhabitants of the earth, and shall continue to be poured out from time to time if they repent not until the earth is empty and the inhabitants thereof are consumed away and uttered, utterly destroyed by the brightness of my coming. Doctrine and Covenants chapter 29 verse 17 And it shall come to pass because of the wickedness of the world that I will take vengeance upon the wicked for they will not repent for the cup of my indignation is full. For behold, my blood shall not cleanse them if they hear me not. The second book of Nephi chapter 30 verse 2. For behold, I say unto you that as many of the Gentiles as will repent are the covenant people of the Lord. And as many of the Jews as will not repent shall be cast off. The, for the Lord, for the Lord covenanted Covenants with none save it be with them that repent and believe in his son, who is the Holy One of Israel. So God saves none, ex only those who repent and believe in his son. Because Christ died for your sins. Mosiah chapter 26 verse 35. And whosoever repents of their sins and did confess them, you have to confess your sins. Them he did number among the people of the church. And those that would not confess their sins and repent of their iniquity, the same were not numbered among the people of the church. And their names were blotted out. Alma chapter 9 verse 12. Behold now I say unto you that he commands you to repent. And except you repent, you can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. But behold, this is not all. He command, has commanded you to repent. 
or he will utterly destroy you from off the face of the earth. Yeah, he will visit you in his anger and in his fierce anger, he will not turn away. So don't procrastinate in your repentance. The first book of Nephi chapter 14 verse 5. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, Nephi, saying, Thou, sh thou hast beheld that if the Gentiles repent, it shall be well with them. And thou also knowest concerning the covenants of the Lord unto the house of Israel. And thou also hast heard that whoso repents not must perish. Now, Luke chapter 13, verse 5. I tell Christ's words, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you you shall all likewise perish. Revelations chapter 2 verse 16. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And Doctrine and Covenants chapter 19 verse 15 goes with Revelations 2 and 16 about repent or else I will come on to thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So this is a continuation of what will happen with Revelations chapter 2 verse 16 in Doctrine and Covenants chapter 19 verse 15. Therefore I command you to repent, repent, lest I smite you by the rod of my mouth and by my wrath and by my anger and your sufferings be sore. How sore, you know not. How exquisite, you know not. Yeah, how hard to bear, you know not. For behold, I, God, have suffered these things for all, that they might not suffer if they would repent. But if they would not repent, they must suffer even as I have, at even as I which suffering caused myself, even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain, and to bleed at every pore, and to suffer both body and spirit. And would that I might not drink the bitter cup and shrink. Nevertheless, glory be to the Father, and I partook and finished my pre pre preparations unto the children of men. Wherefore, I command you again to repent, lest I humble you, with my almighty power and that you that you confess your sins so what did you say wherefore i command you again to repent lest i humble you with my almighty power and that you confess your sins lest you suffer these punishments of which i have spoken of which in the smallest yet even in the least degree you have tasted at the time i've withdrew my spirit amen so this is the teaching and the word of God it, to repent, a call to repentance. And you know God is merciful and he's forgiven and he's merciful enough to, for, for, to forgive you and to remember your sins no more. And he will bloat out your sins and he will stay his hand in his judgment against you. But you must f confess your sins. You must tell the truth. You must confess your sins to God and the person that you sinned against. So it's a call to repentance. I love you beautiful people. Stay blessed in the Lord. And I hope you repent daily. And I hope you become a better person daily. And that you improve yourself every day of your life. Stay blessed.